Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game SO. Tarek and we're continuing the series on the Mr. FPJ DE10 Nano Project. A few days ago, I ran a preview video on Taki Udon's $99 Jurassic DE10 clone board. Talked about the potential of getting Mr. FPGAs to the masses for a much cheaper price and what we'd have to see going forward in some tests. Well, the good thing is Taki Udon has updated us all. He's ran some testing videos on his channel and we'll be talking about that and what looks to be a very promising solution to get a Mr. FPJ into everyone's gaming setup for a much cheaper price and it's currently available. So earlier this week Taki Udon previewed this board. It has the exact same FPGA chip on it but it is a slight redesign. Now on his channel I've linked it below mentioned that I was going to use this footage to him and credit it in the source. He is now showing off this board running different Mr. Cores and that is absolutely incredible because now we can get a look at what's going on here. In the initial photos it could be kind of hard to tell what had changed here. There's a couple different headers and I do believe that this is going to go one more redesign phase before for testing and sale because some of the headers apparently need to be changed out a little bit. Seems like it might be a month or two until that happens. But that is the fun part about this. Pretty much everything on Mr. FPJ outside of the Jurassic DE10 Nano board is community made. So having a community made DE10 board would allow more democratization of this actual platform for more people to enjoy it because I understand the current price of Mr. I think it is quote unquote cheap for what it does, but I understand it is not an inexpensive product either. Inexpensive and cheap sound the same, but they mean two different things to me. So while I do think the Jurassic DE10 Nano board is quote unquote cheap for what it can do, I understand it's not inexpensive. So what if we could actually have an inexpensive DE10 clone board that would allow you to play Mr. FPGA in your home for much cheaper? And that's what Taki Udon is doing. He has stated that he is part of the company doing this project, and that's totally fair. He's been transparent about it. And the more people involved in making Mr. FPGA boards of all shapes and sizes and different uses, the better. Mr. FPGA is one of the most incredible projects I've ever played around with, and obviously I've been making videos on it for a very long time, so something like this fundamentally will be positive for the community once the boards come out and we know they run absolutely everything here. Because I get it, the DE10 Nano board is an old design, Jurassic has been going up in price, not down with a chip shortage, so being able to source a board for your mister that would be $99, not $230, that's not the worst thing in the world. He's also talked about the RAM being around the $15 mark. Now this isn't really a clone, at least to me, because this is an open source design, so they're just building their own RAM boards with the parts available to them and they think they can get it down to that $15 price point. Who knows what sort of profit margin there is on that. Maybe there isn't much whatsoever and this is just a passion project. Honestly, RAM really isn't the expensive part on Mr. But having more available on the market, always again a good thing. And in the previous video, I mentioned the importance of RAM and its quality, especially on the Sega Saturn Core because certain RAM variants that are older and certain manufacturers have had issues running the Sega Saturn Core stably. And that has been something I see in the comments time and time again on Sega Saturn testing videos. I will have people ask me why their Saturn core is freezing up on certain games. When I find out what RAM they're using, it's usually the older variant of the 2.5V variety. That's not to knock that, we've just eclipsed that in Mr. FPGA design, and the new 2.9 and 3.0V modules are definitely much more rock solid stable on the Sega Saturn core. And the good thing is Taki Udon has shown Sega Saturn running on this clone board with the clone RAM. And again, I just say clone, it really isn't. It's just a new source of that open source design. And this is ultra promising. Saturn was the first thing that pretty much everyone thought of when they thought of new RAM and how it would behave because people have been definitely struggling with older RAM sticks on the core. So it seems like as far as the hardware that they are producing, this is running Sega Saturn and that is an absolutely good thing to see. That would have been the first thing I would test when I get this board on my desk and I definitely will be purchasing at least one of these to go over in a full teardown and review when they come out so you guys know all about that. Them. But again, with Sega Saturn being so sensitive to the RAM, it is such a good thing to see Sega Saturn already running on these boards. And I do appreciate that it seems like they waited to talk about this board until it was basically ready to show testing on, not something where they announced it, that we had to wait six months to see any content running on it. So big credit to Taki Udon, whoever he's working with to get these things up and running. They didn't announce anything until they're ready to show it actually running on the hardware. But thinking about something like Nintendo 64, that was another core 
or it would be one of my first tests when this board is in front of me because again it's pushing the FPGA chip on the DE10 to its absolute limits and again on Taki Udon's channel here he showed Goldeneye running. Now it does look like it's running a little bit slow but trust me that is just Goldeneye. This seems to be the stock core not the turbo core so any sort of choppiness you see in the testing footage that is probably just Goldeneye absolutely chugging on its own frame rate. This is what we played back in the day. It's what we were used to. We absolutely loved it back in the 90s and today we definitely don't love it as much but it is running the Nintendo 64 and that is also great because as far as the available logic on the FPGA chip on the DE10 Nano, the Nintendo 64 core basically has it almost 100% full as does the Sega Saturn. So this being a clone board with that same chip, it seems to be getting the same performance. Now I am still curious about the analog out on this thing. Obviously the DE10 doesn't do analog out. What I really mean is the compatibility with all of the different IO boards out there, because it would be nice to know that when you pick up one of these clone boards, that you can just go and get an IO board from any vendor you want, plug it in, and it would work just like you would expect on the traditional DE10 Nano. That's what I'm expecting, but we have to wait and see. Now they did also show off some RAM latency testing and it passes with no errors whatsoever until they overclock it into the 160s. That is not in any way shape or form an odd thing. If I take my misters today with good RAM and overclock them, I'm probably going to get it to error out as well. But again, I am curious to hear about what's going on with this new header design and the new prototype boards that they're going to be spinning up soon. And the handheld is definitely something that is appealing to me and pretty much everyone else. Almost all of the comments outside of they'd love a $99 Trastic DE10 Nano involve the handheld, but so far we've just seen this thing tested on an LCD display, so no real evidence yet of the top hat going on, but I'm just presuming they're showing the bare board. Honestly, at this point in time, I am highly optimistic of this project. It's done by a reputable creator, it's been shown off in testing, and it is running, and it seems to be coming in at $100, so there's nothing here that makes me think anything other than this is super exciting for the Mr. FPJ community and the retro gaming community in general. They've shown Super Nintendo running, and there's so many incredible games to play there. It's definitely a light test core for the DE10 Nano, but one that everyone's definitely going to want to play. Even Sega Genesis here, it seems like Taki Udon is going through just the hits, all of those A-sides of the core world, and showing that they are running on this clone board, and I think that's absolutely smart. This is what people want to know, because again, there's so many incredible Sega Genesis games. We have the Sega CD as well as the Sega 32X. The idea that we could be playing all of those for a $99 investment would be an absolutely incredible thing, and he even showed off PlayStation one and don't worry about the polygons at the left and the right that is internal engine calling in crash bandicoot it has nothing to do with the core or the clones performance that's what it looks like if you do this on real hardware so yeah it seems like there's a 99 dollar mr fpj board coming your way and when i say mr fpj board i mean a clone of the Trastic de10 nano because again the de10 nano is not made by the community this was the board that was selected when people decided to develop mr into a platform and everything that plugs into the DE10 is what the community develops. But it'll be very interesting to see what the next board design brings. Taki Udon seems to be nailing this so far, and I am very excited for everyone. I don't need any more misters in my life. I already have three, but I will definitely pick a board or two up and test them. Maybe I'll even give away a mister, because at that price point, it seems like a fun thing to do. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. But if you're wondering whether or not I'm optimistic on this project, if you can't clearly tell, I definitely am. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.